Hi everyone, in this video we're looking at how to create a 3D contour toolpath around a three-dimensional part like this in Maycare Cam. Now what contour toolpaths allow you to do is follow edges or perimeters within your design. For example, the outline of this part or even this inner pocket that I have here, like the slot for the uh, LED sign here that we have for our LED light example project. And that will allow you to create different types of cuts that deviate from creating things like pockets to clear out inner cavities with your design, which we look at more in another video. Now you can of course create contour paths around 2D files that we also look at in another video. And you can perform 3D contour toolpaths on a wide range of 3D files from step files like this to mesh files like an STL if you were creating a relief, which we look at more in another video. So let's create a 3D contour which will open up our contour preferences here. Now, the first thing we have to do whenever we're creating a 3D contour is generate a contour path. And the reason is that we can't just create a contour around the entirety of a part like this, as it's a complex geometric feature, or even create a contour around a single face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the entire object in our design and then click Generate Contour. And what this will do is it will find the perimeter cuts that can be used to create the contours within your design. You can then select the contour that you wanna work with. So for example, I'm going to select this inner contour to remove this material here within my design. Next, we can set our cutting depths. So for example, I can set my start depth and as this will already be cleared from a pocket, I might not need to start at the surface of my stock. I could actually set this to start within my stock if I've already kind of cleared part of this pocket away, like we look at in our pocket video, and my end depth offset. You'll see that the end depth is automatically predetermined and that's determined based upon your model. So MakeCareCam has determined that I need to cut 20.3 millimeters based on the height of my model. And if I want to cut more or less than this, I can always enable an offset. So if I want to cut, say, a millimeter past my model, I can enable an end depth offset to do so. If you'd like, you can enable last pass depth, which will create a finishing pass at a set height as you're working around your stock. And you can also change your safe positions if you want to move around different clearance heights or retract heights to work around different fixtures that you might have on your bed. Next, let's go ahead and select a tool, and I'm going to select a tool that would be able to perform this cut, such as my 3.175 by 25 millimeter end mill that we use in the LED light example. And you'll notice that my cutting parameters have already been set based upon the stock selections that I made earlier. If you wanna to choose to change the cutting parameters around the defaults, you can do so, and you'll notice that step down is something that we can change quite easily. Step down determines how much material is removed per pass. And if you're creating a rough cut where you're cutting through a lot of material, like for example, cutting 20 millimeters into your part, you typically don't wanna do that in a single pass as that will put a lot of stress and strain on your bit. So by having a step down of one, which is the default for plastics with our machines, that will remove a millimeter at a time gradually, but you can easily adjust that. You can also adjust any of your other feeds and speeds, and you can of course change the tool number if you wanna reassign this tool to be in a different slot for your automatic tool changer, or just assign it to be a different number than what you're using already for both the Carvera and Carvera Air. Now here you see we have our different contour strategies as well as this pocket checkbox. When creating a contour cut, you can typically choose to create an inside cut where you follow along the inside of your contour. You can create an outside cut where you follow along the outside of the contour and an on vector cut where you follow right along the contour. So the bit will actually be centered on the contoured line. For creating this inside pocket cut, really I wanna keep an inside contour and I could even choose to offset it more or less if I wanted to change the size of the pocket, or I can enable this pocket checkbox. And what that lets you do is it lets you mill the contour, which is great for creating holes using a contour pass. This will automatically set the contour to follow the inside of the lines as if it's creating a pocket, and also gives you some other pocket machining options such as offset or parallel depending on how you want to clear the pocket out, which we talk more about in our other tutorial videos and guides. You can also choose between conventional or climb milling and choose to enable ramping. And what ramping will do is it will allow your bit to gradually enter the stock rather than plunging straight in, which will reduce any excess strain, which is a very handy tactic to do when working with hard materials like metal. And then you can also enable tabs, which will hold on to your part during machining, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. If I calculate this, you'll see that my bit will run through and clear out this inner pocket using a contour toolpath, where it just follows along the inside of this line to remove this feature in my part. 
Next, let's go ahead and create a different type of contour where we actually want to cut the part out of the stock. So I'm going to create a new 3D contour toolpath. I'm going to click on our object and generate contours. And this time I'm going to click on this outer contour and we're going to cut the outer perimeter of our part. I again want to cut past my stock, so I'm going to keep my depth offset of one millimeter and I'm not going to change any of my clearance heights. And I'm also going to use the same bit that I selected earlier with the same cutting parameters that I selected earlier as well. Now to cut this outer contour, we're instead going to switch to an outside cut, which will allow the bit to follow along the contour on the outside, meaning that my part will remain in its full dimensions that it is now, and the bit will cut away any excess material around the part rather than cutting within as we did earlier. Again, you can choose between conventional or climb milling, ramping, and now we're going to talk about tabs. What tabs do is they hold on to the part during machining. Without tabs, once this part is fully cut out, it could project from the material if it's not secured. And in some of our videos, we show how to use double-sided tape to secure your stock, which works great for working with PCBs or thinner materials like different plastic parts that you might be cutting. But you may also want to consider using tabs, which will hold on to your stock and then can be cut away manually using a handsaw in post-processing. So once we hit enable custom tabs, we can choose between rectangular tabs or triangular tab shapes. We can also manually set a width and a height for our tabs and then click the add button to add tabs along the contour. So by clicking on this contour, I can enable as many or as few tabs as I'd like. You can of course press the clear button if you want to delete the tabs and instead try again or add them in a different location and then click exit add once you've added all the tabs that you want for this part. Now when we calculate this contour, you'll see that the contour cuts around the outside perimeter of the part rather than on the inside, and you also see that the tab areas are skipped, so that way this material remains during the machining process. So three-dimensional contour is a handy toolpath that you can use to cut out not only the outer perimeter of your parts, but potentially inner pocket features using this outline type of cut, as we show in some of our other videos as well for 2D design files. Of course, stay tuned for more tutorials and guides on the Makera channel and Wiki site, and thanks for watching.